Jesus. I just love on the Lord today. How much the Lord loves you. How much He desires you. Oh, how He desires you. Oh, how He loves you. Just love on the Lord. Thank Him for loving you. Oh, how much He cares for you. How much He desires to be with you, in you, and among you. Oh, Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. <laughs> Father, we worship you. We praise you, oh God. Thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy upon our life, God. That you would come this Wednesday night and that your presence would fill this place, oh God. Hey, that our hearts are hungry and expecting you, oh God, to have your way in our life, to do as you want to do, to reveal yourself to us. Do it only you can do. Oh God, have your way. Minister life to us by your word and your spirit, oh God. Do it only. We open our hearts to you today. We thank you for teaching us. We thank you for showing us the way. We thank you for revealing yourself to us, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Somebody tell the Lord, I love you, Lord. Oh, tell him I love you, Lord. I love you. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. <laughs> Somebody just tell him, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus. It doesn't even have to be Valentine's Day. You know, you, you just tell him, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I, I bless you, Lord. I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, oh God. I love you. Thank you that you're so good to us, oh God. You care so much for your children. Because you're you wonderful. Amazing, beautiful. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you because you're glorious. Jesus, I love, I love. Jesus, I love. Come on, can we just tell him when we sing this song? Jesus, I love you, I love you because you're wonderful, you're wonderful. Shout, I love you. I love you. Oh, just shout, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. You're the best thing. Oh, 
Oh, come on. You're, you're the best that's ever happened you're to me. You're the best thing. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you. Ever happened. Just tell your neighbor, Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to you. Jesus is the best thing. Hey, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. Hallelujah. And tonight we're going to encounter Jesus. <laughs> hey, come on. Tonight we're going to encounter Jesus again and again and again. Amen. Come on. <laughs> we're going to encounter him again tonight because he's so wonderful. And he's been waiting to encounter you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you greet your neighbor and tell him it's good to see you this Wednesday night. Glad you're here. Great to see you. Great to see you smiling. You look so wonderful smiling. So blessed. So blessed. So blessed. So blessed you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord is good. If y'all have the opportunity to sow, you can get your offering envelope ready. You can give by credit card. Uh, Brother Brent's in the back back there. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow and give into the house of the Lord, into the word of God. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is wonderful. I'm going to read you some scripture. I want you to go to Exodus chapter 17. Y'all better be ready for this one. That's when I was in my office, you know, God, he just drops these nuggets, you know, bam. And uh, you read it and read it and read it, and you never see it. Until that day, he opens up your eyes. Amen. Say, Lord, open up my eyes. Because if he opens up your eyes, you see what you've never seen before. It's most powerful, amen? Um, uh, amen. I don't have time to teach that, but just just take the word of God for it, that he opens up your eyes to scriptures you've never seen before. Exodus chapter 17. We're going to receive the offering, and then we'll let the children go to their class, and then I'm going to get into the message real quick. Amen? 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 amen. amen. Oh, there we go. We're, we're here. Are you here? Are you ready to receive your miracle? <laughs> so Exodus 17, thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I thank you right now for moving upon the hearts of the people by the, uh, in Jesus' name. So then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey. This is 17.1. On their journey from the wilderness of sin. Wow. According to the commandment of the Lord. Somebody say we left sin. Glory to God. And, <laughs> and camped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Somebody say there was no water. Somebody say there was no money. Somebody say there was no food. Somebody say there was no provision. Oh, there, there was nothing. Nothing. Somebody say there was nothing. Have you ever been in a place there was nothing? Oh, welcome to Exodus 17. There was no water in the place in which they camped. Oh, my God. Somebody say, but God. Hey, somebody say, but God. Hey, so there was no water for the people to drink. And so the people, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase, you know, the people contended and argued and fought and complained and whined. And, you know, somebody say, help us, Lord Jesus. They complained and complained and complained and complained and cried and fought and argued and Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. And so Moses cried out, verse 4, Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. I don't know if everybody has ever been in a place or a position where folk just want to stone you. Somebody say, Paul, Jesus, Moses, you're in good company. So Moses is crying out to the Lord for his life. Somebody say for his life. But the people were upset because there was no water. And in their mentality, because there was no water, their reasoning was because God wanted to kill them. 
Somebody say bad thinking. Somebody say bad thinking. Say bad thinking. Hey, God never intended for anyone to die. Come on, read your New Testament Bible. I feel the Holy Ghost. All oh, my nose is tingling, Lord Jesus. I'm like, what is this? Hallelujah. So, so much. Woo. Hallelujah. So, they had bad thinking because they had no water. Don't let a situation determine what you'll think. Oh, let me help somebody. Don't let a circumstance or a situation determine what you are going to think. Because they had no water, their thinking was stinking. So the lack of water helped them see their thoughts. Oh, Lord Jesus. So lack will show you what's in your mind. Oh, but God. Somebody say, but God. Somebody say, God's changing my mind right now. Oh, he's changing my mind right now. I refuse to think lack. <laughs> and so the Bible says, so Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. They're trying to kill me, Jesus. These people you sent me for are trying to kill me. So, and the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people. Somebody say, go in front of the people. Hey, lead the people. Even when they want to kill you, get in front of them. And take with you some of the elders of Israel. Some, not all, but some. Also take in your hand your rod. Oh, man. That thing that God used to deliver you the last time, pick it up. He said, take in your hand your rod which you struck the river and go. He's giving Moses instructions again because the people needed water. Somebody need some money in here? God gives the man of God instructions to do in front of you. Oh, am I helping somebody yet? Are you having an expectation no matter how dry it seems to be? No matter how dead something looks. Hey, you want you see the hand of the Lord deliver you yesterday? He's sure enough going to deliver you today. But you got to remember to pick up what delivered you yesterday. You can't keep it on the ground. You got to pick that thing up again. What God? How God delivered you yesterday, he said to Moses, the way I delivered you, don't forget, pick that rod back up. Go on before the people pick that rod up. And verse 6 says what? Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock. He told Moses, get in front of the people, and as soon as you get in front of the people, I'll get in front of you. People say, why you dance? Why you laugh when you're up here, man of God? You know why? Because I know God is standing in front of me. Hey, if I didn't believe God was standing in front of me, I'd give somebody else the microphone. But I know one thing. God is standing before me. And if God is standing before me, he's showing us standing before you. I said he's standing before you. And he said you shall strike the rock. And what's going to happen? Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. Who was standing on the rock? Somebody say Jesus. Jesus was standing on the rock, and he told Moses, Moses, with that rod, hit the rock. And as soon as you hit that rock, guess what? What you are lacking is about to pop out. Oh, see, you got to have faith to believe the impossible. I said, you got to have faith to believe the impossible. Because all things are possible to him that believes. 
I don't know about you, if you ever went outside in your backyard, found a rock, and said, come out, you should try it. Because if it worked for Moses, it should work for you. You see, the word of God is eternal. It ain't never changed. And if a rod can produce water out of a rock, your offering can produce money in your bank. You see, your offering can break the back of poverty just like a rod broke the back of drought. A place that was dry and empty, it took a stick touching a rock in the hand of a man of God. Not just any stick and not just any rock. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't just any stick and it wasn't just any rock. You better know that's not just any kind of money. That is a seed. And it's not put in any place. It's put in a place in which God stands. See, when God stands on a place called the rock, anything can come up out of that. Are, are you here? I, I, I know we live in a society and a system that is filled with doubt and unbelief but this house is a house of faith and where there is faith God is pleased and God moves in a place of faith to produce what you have need of and I tell you this one thing God stands on this rock and when you take your tithe, your offering, your seed of love, and you put it on the rock. The Bible says, and behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. And you shall strike the rock and water will come out. Somebody say will. will. There was no maybe. Can you imagine Moses was standing before a multitude of people and he looked at them, smiled, and said, I know what to do. All I need to do is remind you where you came from. <laughs> I want you to back up to verse 5. He says, also take in your hand your rod which you struck the what? He said the last thing that rod touched was a river. <laughs> so I'm going to take the anointing that's in that rod where it touched the river and I'm going to touch the rock and I'm going to make a river come out of the rock. And I don't know about you, but the last thing your money touched was probably the bank. So you need to take that thing called money that came out of the bank and put it in the soil so it will produce the last thing that it touched. Somebody shout Jesus. say I receive mine I receive mine father we take this seed and we touch the rock today hey and what that seed is and where it came from that's what it will produce when it touches the rock that rock in which you stand today we know that you stand on the rock called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and when we touch our seed upon the rock that the rock shall produce much water in Jesus name I decree and declare that all your bills are paid I, 
because water can come out the rock. Oh, that means money can show up into your hands, into your account. Hey, bills can be canceled just like that. Yes, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, every debt is retired. Hallelujah. Somebody say retired. Retired. That means it no longer works against you. Hallelujah. It no longer works against you because you call it to retire. Yeah. Yeah. You give it a pink slip and say, thank you very much, but I'm done with you. Amen. It's time for me to take what belongs to me and put it in another place. Amen. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you're fruitful, that you prosper, that you increase. That money comes out of that rock yeah. and fills your account, fills your life, fills your vision, fills your understanding, and it fulfills your purpose. Somebody say, my purpose is being fulfilled. My purpose is being fulfilled. Because it's coming out of the rock. In the name of Jesus. Oh, say it in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Somebody, somebody say, I got it. I got it. I receive it. I receive it. I'm blessed today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. All right, y'all bless. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, sing a little bit, brother. Since thou hast walked over rightly, like a light in a dark land, since thou hast placed in my heart. All the Lord's commands He set me up a nation That's my need to be the way It's rising up within you So let me hear you say We are blessed in the city We are blessed in the field We are blessed when we come and when we go We cast down every stronghold Sickness and poverty must be For the devil is defeated let me hear you sing this. Let me hear you sing this. Well, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Believe it. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Sing blessed. One more time, sing blessed. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a, a shout of praise. Glory to God. Why don't you give the worship team a, a hand clap also? You guys can be seated. Amen. What a blessing. Are you blessed? Do you have a clarity in your heart? A <laughs> Isn't the word of the Lord powerful? Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is so powerful, so profound. Why don't you go to Matthew chapter 1? Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? Amen. I I'm still working on uh, out of, let me say, I'm still working out of Genesis 126. Amen. I want you to remember that verse. It's so strong in your heart. Amen. Genesis 126. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Amen. Amen. Let him have dominion or authority in this domain. Somebody say, I have authority in this domain. I have authority in this domain. Created in image and likeness of God. Amen. We are God's representative on earth and he has given us dominion or authority. Amen. 
and we are called to rule and reign with Christ Jesus on earth. Am I helping somebody yet? Amen. Am I helping somebody? You, you, you didn't just show up on earth and get saved just because you had nothing else to do. <laughs> you imagine you had nothing else to do in this whole entire uh, universe, solar system, the whole thing that God designed. There was nothing else for God to do, but he decided to make you so you can show up on earth and go, um, what are we doing? <laughs> Somebody say, not so. <laughs> he designed us on purpose. <laughs> Hey, you wake up every day on, oh, we we missed that one, we missed that one. We wake up every day on, every day you wake up on purpose. There is something, whether small or great, in which God designs for you to do every day. Amen? I mean, every day you wake up on purpose, whether it's for a small thing that day or a great thing that day. It does not matter. When you arise, there is something on assignment inside of you to put your foot on. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Can I help you? That there is something in on assignment in you that you must wake up and put your foot on. It, 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 it could be small. It could be great. It does not matter whether it's small or great. What matters is that you put your foot on it. Oh, somebody say, put your foot on it. That's dominion. That's authority. Hey, wherever the soles of your foot tread shall belong to you. Amen. Oh, I don't know if y'all came for a Wednesday night, Saturday, or Sunday, or a Tuesday, or a Thursday. But I just came to tell you the word of the Lord. That you wake up every day on purpose. You are empowered every day on purpose to put your foot on something for the kingdom of God. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't matter whether it's small or great. You got to tell your neighbor, it doesn't matter whether it's small or great. What matters is that you put your foot on that thing. That is your dominion, your authority, your assignment is to conquer something every day. We don't live a life without purpose. We don't wake up and do nothing. We are awakened to accomplish something. Yes. Amen. Am I helping somebody? Sometimes it takes me two hours to get out of bed. You say, why? Because I am waiting on assignment. What am I assigned to conquer today? See, when I had a, a normal job, it didn't take me that long because I already knew I had a nine to five or six to whatever. You know, it used to be six to whatever for me. <laughs> whatever I finished, then I went home. <laughs> and then when I started my company, I didn't have to contemplate, Lord, what do you have for me today? I already had a signed contract that I must go and put my foot on and conquer for the kingdom. Oh, I just want to help somebody. Can I help somebody? You see, every day you're on assignment for the kingdom. You must awaken and be sober-minded to know that I woke up today to put my foot on something for the kingdom. It could be where you are working now. Wherever you're working now, you go there, you take your dominion, and you accomplish that thing you have been assigned for that day. Oh, can I preach to somebody, please? Can I awaken a powerful people today? Can I awaken a people of great power and purpose? For you were created in the image and likeness of God. God doesn't even sleep, and every day he accomplishes great things. <laughs> Do you realize from the first day God ever spoke light be, that light continues to grow? As soon as science gets further, then the expanse of space has already stretched further. We can never catch up with God. Yeah. 
Even though science tries so hard to catch up with God. This is not my message. This is a little side note for you. Because God is at work every single day. He's at work. His work. His business. His assignments. Amen. You know how he's at work? We say, the, didn't the Bible say he rested? Oh, yes, it does say he rested, but he put his rest into something. Oh. Somebody say, what, man of God, what? He, please tell me what did God put his rest in? Because, yes, the Bible says on the seventh day God rested, but because on the sixth day God made you. But God did not put his rest in you. Oh, because if he would have put his rest in you when Adam failed, God would have been restless. So he didn't put his rest in a man. Somebody help me here. Oh, I just want to keep going, but I should read you a scripture. Flip out of Matthew, just go to John. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's just look there. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So God made man through the Word, and then God... Oh, some of y'all at rest right now. Y'all still trying to catch up. Somebody say all things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Who's him? Somebody say the word. So God made man on the sixth day, but the word was already there before he began. So on the sixth day, he made you. On the seventh day, he rested. What did he rest on? He rested on his word. If man fails, my word will never fail. Oh. Oh. You never put your rest in a man. You always put your rest in the word. I'm about to do the Carlton if I could. Where's Josh, man? Josh is my Carlton, you know what I'm saying? Somebody like, who, what? <laughs> Every day you are awakened because there is purpose still in you. Every day you wake up, there is purpose in you that you must dominate. Somebody say, I must dominate. Because Genesis 1.26 declares that God made us just like him. God is a ruler, a dominator. You, you understand? When God shows up on the scene, everything changes. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I think I would preach to myself here. You see, God is a dominator. He is the highest authority there ever is. So when God shows up, everything. Oh, my. We got to work on that. When God shows up, everything. Oh, you don't believe that, do you? You sound like you maybe, maybe, possibly. But when God shows up, everything changes. Why? Because he is the most dominant force there is. See, I, I know some of y'all football folk like, man, when this guy hits the field, it changes everything. You ain't never seen God hit the field. Uh -huh. Some people keep God benched in their life. Where's God? He's on the bench. When are we ever going to put God in the game of our life? That when God shows up, he dominates the field of our life. And when he steps foot on that thing, he's like, I own this ground. And whatever I say, that's the way it's going to be. I 
I'm hoping you get an image in your heart of who you have been birthed after. <laughs> Somebody say no more small mindedness. All things become possible because I am a believer. I'm not a small thinker. I'm a great believer. I believe like my father. Mm, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, I feel you now. Oh, my God. So God doesn't even wake up because he's always awake. <laughs> always. Awake. <laughs> and when we sleep, he's still dominating. He waits for you to awaken so you can catch up with his dominating spirit. I don't know about you. Has ever, 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 ever happened that, you know, you haven't made it through all night and you awaken? God's giving you extra time to catch up. Some people go, it's 3 a.m., why am I awake? God is giving you extra time for you to catch up with this dominating spirit that he is. He's saying, I've conquered so much for you today. Wake up and pray so you can get in it. Somebody say, I'm getting an image. I'm getting it in me. Every day I wake up, it is to accomplish great things. Mm. When you awaken, you must understand when your feet hit the ground. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You always wonder, why did God give us two feet and not one? <laughs> you know why? Because there's always something about two in the Bible. It says any two of you agree. That's why both feet face the same direction. Because they're in alignment. They're in agreement. They're pointing in the same direction. That means when you wake up in the morning, your feet should be pointing in the same direction. My feet are in agreement to conquer. My feet are in agreement to possess the land. I have awakened to take what belongs to me for the kingdom of God. You see, all heaven and earth should hear you wake up. Uh, some people wake up softly, you know. The Bible says, ponder your path. Think about it. Dwell on it. Take a minute when you awaken and dwell on your domination for the day. Oh. I know people don't like this kind of preaching because they get a little nervous, you know. But when you meet God, God just. <laughs> don't get a little nervous. Tell your neighbor, don't get nervous. You're just discovering who you really are. You're starting to see your real DNA. Everything else lies to you. I said everything else lies to you. Everything else lies to you. That's all the enemy has to work with is the ability to deceive you. That's all he has. That's all he has is the ability to deceive. He has no power except the power you personally give him. Uh -oh. The Bible says God has given you all power. Which means Satan has no more power. 
only that that he can tell you he has over your life, which is deception. But the Bible says for you to put him under your foot. Why? Because whatever you put under your foot, you possess. Amen. Let me help you. Whatever you possess, you control. Whatever you possess, you control. Amen? So when you put him under your feet, you really possess him when all he ever wants to do is possess you. Somebody say, thank you for Jesus. <laughs> this is why you must be awakened to your true image. Because Satan can no longer possess you. All he can ever do is deceive you. He can make you think. Oh, you're waiting for another word? Are you still thinking? He can make you think you are defeated. And when you accept that thought, you now empower him to come out from under your feet. I thought I'd help somebody today. I thought I was helping somebody today. That's, that's why when the enemy hits, he hits in the thought processes. That's why the Bible says to guard your mind. Be sober-minded. Why? So you can have authority over your mind. That's why the Bible says... Take the mind of Christ, which is an authoritative mind, a mind of possession. Oh, I just wanted to take you to a whole other place. Can we go? So when God made you, he rested, but his rest was not found in you. Though you can give God rest, his rest is not found in you. God's rest is found in his word. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you come right here. I feel, I feel something right, I feel something right, right here. I feel something moving right here. God doesn't find rest in a person. Because that person can always change his mind. Today you like blueberries, tomorrow I don't like blueberries. Oh, we all in trouble now, you know. I mean, yesterday they were wonderful. Today, I don't know. I mean, that fried chicken was excellent, but today I just, I don't like that fried chicken no more. I mean, yesterday I loved God. Today I'm not so sure. Because it didn't seem like he came through. <laughs> you see, uh, blueberries, everybody was like, <laughs> God, everybody, like, mm. I don't know, we should, I don't know, do we laugh at that one or not, baby? <laughs> I mean, if I laugh, I might get convicted, you know? <laughs> Hold on, let me get a water, y'all think about that one. So God doesn't find his identity or rest in you. Oh, you just, you. God doesn't find his identity in you. Nor does he find his rest in you. God is God because he is. I can feel it coming like heavy rain. <laughs> he doesn't find his identity in you. Are you here? In other words, if you falter, he doesn't. 
if you say yes today and no tomorrow, he, he's the same. Can we imagine if God found his identity in us, how messed up God would be? Therefore, God does not find his identity in you. Hear me very clearly. Nor does he find his rest in you. The Bible says it's the word. The word became flesh and manifested. Therefore, the identity of Jesus was produced by the word. Ay, 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 ay. So you can always find the identity of Jesus in the word. So God doesn't look for his identity in you. Hear me now. Because I see some of you going, wait a minute, I thought he looked for his image in me. <laughs> yes and no. Huh? In other words, if I look at my daughter who is at home right now, taking care of business for us. If I look at her, I see myself in her. But she doesn't make me who I am. Do you understand the difference? God looks at you and he can see himself in you, but by you he doesn't find himself. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Therefore, God had to put his identity in a more sure thing, which is his. Somebody say his word. So his identity is in his word. Therefore, his word is eternal. Why? Because he. Why was the word in the beginning? Because he is the beginning. That's okay. That's good anyway. You still got the right answer. Check. His word is in the beginning because he is the Beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega, oh, the first, the last, the everlasting father. So his identity is wrapped in what he says. That's why you can spend five minutes with somebody and you can identify them. Because their identity is what they say. Yes? Amen? Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm highly the Lord is with me. <laughs> Amen? Are you awake now? Amen. On purpose? Yes. This is why the enemy comes to thwart you on a daily basis. Why? To deny you who you are. Let's say it right here. This is why the enemy comes to thwart you every day. That word thwart is to like buffet or to hinder or to stop you on a daily basis. Because we live what? Day by day by day. We, we, we calculate accomplishments by the basis of each day. So the enemy comes to thwart you every day. Why? To cancel your identity. To change your image. This is why the Bible says, give us our daily image. Give us our daily identity. That means every day you must wake up and know who you are. How do you know who you are? Because you eat the bread of heaven. That means when you awaken, you're listening for the bread of heaven to be deposited as identity. Oh. Jesus. Every day. You're not just waking up to read the Bible. 
because you chalk it off your list of daily things to do. You are looking for yourself in the book so you can put your foot on your assignment for the day. Oh, maybe I should have waited till Saturday to preach this, huh? No, 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 no. So every day you wake up, you are listening or looking for yourself so you can produce on that day who you is. Who are you today? I, I, I know yesterday, today's what? Wednesday? Yesterday? Or was it Monday? Maybe it was Monday. Monday. Monday I was, I was like David. You know what David was? David was the one that waited all day upon the Lord. I found myself when I woke up Monday and said, oh yeah. I'm waiting. This is my assignment to accomplish this day is to wait upon his presence. Somebody said we should have went shopping. Really? We should have did this. Really? We needed to do that. Really? Oh, I just I I don't know. I don't know if I can help you like that. Can I help you like that? Daily bread. Somebody say daily bread. See, we always tend to awaken and try to rush into life. And then life rushes us. Because we have the wrong man on the field. We have the wrong one on the field. The wrong, wrong one. Somebody say wrong one. How oh, we came out. They come. Somebody told me they're going to write a, a, a Faithful Life Pastor Nathan Dictionary. <laughs> Can you make up your own words? But does it work? Yes, it does. <laughs> so we, we wake up and put the wrong man on the field. Because we don't live by our life by assignment. We live it by. Ah. <laughs> There's a word for you. Ah. Yes. See, you all understand me. <laughs> you all understand. Ah. I got to get the kids dressed. Ah. I got to take the kids to school. Ah. I got to make breakfast. Ah. I got to do this. Ah. I got to do that. See, you all know what I'm talking about. Put that one in the dictionary now. Ah! <laughs> Somebody say, wrong man on the field. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Do you see? <laughs> so God rested in his word. And his word never failed him. Somebody say Jesus. Never failed the father. Because he is the word. And guess who will never fail you? Oh, uh, guess who will never ever fail you? It's not that hard of a guess. If God put his trust in the word. He says, you follow my pattern and put your trust in the word. 
all things were made by the word. Yes. Are you here? Amen. Somebody say thank you for the word. So, but here's what's interesting. <clears throat> the word produces an image. The word produces an image. So when you hear the word, it should produce an image. Can I tell you what that is called? Revelation. When the word does not produce an image, it is simply information. So when you have information, you have half the product. And this is what most Christians wake up and jump out with one leg. Half the product. They don't have the full picture. This is the struggle in Christianity. Because God did not jump out on Half. Can you imagine God just sending half Jesus? <laughs> well, we got half of it, so let's send half. No. In fact, God waited 4,000 years to produce the whole. From the day he spoke her seed will bust your head 4,000 years later. The full image showed up. This is why as believers we cannot live our life on information. The word is a picture maker. What do they call that? Pictograph? What is that? I heard, I, what is a pictograph? You don't know. I don't feel so bad. Look at y'all. <laughs> y'all got Googles. Hurry up. I know y'all be like, mm. where's Badge all at? Badge all. He's my Google master. What's a pictograph? Somebody help me. Pictograph. Woo. Ho, ho, ho. See? I love the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. What is that? Pictograph. A pictorial symbol for a word or a phrase. Isn't that interesting? Which is what the Hebrews used to write. Symbolisms. Each symbol represented a word. Come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all think I get up here by myself. Ah, I'm smarter than that. <laughs> But I ain't this smart. So pictographs were used as the earliest known form of writing. Examples having been discovered in Egypt and Mesopotamia from before 3000 B.C. Hmm. Wow. Are you here? So God's word should be a pictograph. When he speaks, it should produce an image inside of you. So basically, this is how it works. Because faith is the trust in the word. Faith is trusting the word, yes? That's why faith comes by hearing the word comes by hearing the word of God. So faith is the trust in an image in which is produced. Oh, I lost about 50% of you. This is why we don't put our faith in information. We put our faith in revelation. Because faith on a... Uh, 
If you don't have the full picture, you'll never get the full manifestation. You'll always be in hope and not in produce. It's like somebody hopes I have a baby. Guess what? You'll never get the picture. You ever been to the doctor and say, I hope I'm pregnant? Look in there. There ain't nothing in there. Somebody knows they're pregnant, guess what? They take a picture, and there's an image. Oh, Lord. I just said all the women said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Fellas, y'all figure it out. <laughs> God's system works by imagery. You don't think it works by imagery? Go look at what Satan said. To the woman, look at this fruit, Eve. It's wonderful. Isn't it beautiful? God knows if you eat of this thing. What was he telling her? What was he showing her? He was showing her an image that she felt she didn't have. He was taking an image to fight an image. Somebody say amen at least. Just, uh, just at least act like you're receiving it. I guess. <laughs> so he used an image to change her image. He said, "You will become like God if you eat this image." You'll become like this image. <laughs> he didn't speak empty words to her. He spoke words with imagery. Okay. He didn't say, look, Eve, hey, watch. If you just go and eat of, a, you know, the fruit... Um, you'll be like God. No, he met her at the tree and said, if you eat this thing here, you will be like God. Her image was already made like God. How do we know? Because Adam was made in the image of God, and God pulled her out of Adam. Oh, I got to mess with this one a little bit more. Did he, did he not pull woman out of Adam? So she was in the image of God through. Oh, I just went somewhere. Through Adam. So how did Satan convince Eve that she wasn't like God? Because she came through Adam. Because she came. Through him. Are you listening? Are you sure? So she believed she had half. This is the issue with Christianity. We think God gives us half of Jesus. Half of himself. A piece of himself. We don't realize the potential that's in us because the enemy is always trying to sell us another image. So we sell out for that image because we don't realize the image that's in us. Are you receiving? Somebody say, I'm greater than I know. <laughs> I am mightier than I know. <laughs> Hi. 
So he used an image to change her image. So all she did was sell that to Adam. She sold it to him. And the Bible says that the spirit of God left them and they became naked. So the real image of God in them left. They were no longer the authority of heaven on earth. Because the authority was in the image. This is why Jesus says, I now give you all power, all authority. give you a piece. He didn't give you a slice. Are you here? So you can trust what God gave you. Somebody say the word. This is why you must find yourself in the word. Somebody say, I must find myself in the word. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you in the word? Are you a Zacchaeus in the tree? Are you the blind Bartimaeus? By the road, who are you? Listen, the Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God's identity was in Jesus, which is the word. So when Jesus was given the word, the Bible says he found Himself. Uh oh, oh y'all wanted a small message today, huh? You wanted a small one. The Bible says when Jesus went to the temple, they gave him the book of Isaiah. He opened the book and found himself. Where did he find himself? I ain't ashamed. This is the same place I find myself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Oh, yes. Can you find yourself in the same scripture? Aye, aye, aye. Uh, maybe I'm preaching to the wrong people. Can you open the book and find that's me? The spirit of God is on me, and he hath anointed me. To open up my mouth and preach the image of heaven on earth. Somebody say, I've been born to dominate. That's why he gave me two feet. That's why he pointed them in the same direction. So that they would be in agreement and I wouldn't walk in a circle. And then he gave me a proverb that says, ponder the path of my feet to think about where I'm going to go and what I need to do. And then he gave us another scripture that said that the spirit of the Lord should lead you. So the spirit of God wakes you every day and says, come follow. Because wherever I walk you is a place for you to dominate. Wherever I walk you, even if he walks you to the same job for 5, 10, 15 years, you walk into that place being led by the Spirit to dominate that place. 
That's a little weak one. That's, that's a little weak right there. Maybe you should have clapped a little harder for Jesus, you know. Come on, maybe you give Jesus a little more praise. Maybe you understand why you face the same boss every day. It's because you were sent to turn his life around. You've been sent in that place to dominate by the heavens and change it. But when we have small thinking, it changes us. Somebody say, I changed my mind. I think big. Every place I go, I change it. So when God shows up, Everything is subject to. Change. I think five people caught that one. I think five people caught that one. When God shows up in a place, everything is subject to. Change. So every place you go as the image of God, that Thing is subject to change. Yeah. Woo! So when you walk in there, you walk in there with just the grace of God on your life. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah somebody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, when you walk into that restaurant, you're like, mm hmm. I'm not going to sit there. I would like to sit there. You say, why? Because there's somebody over there that I got to talk to. There's somebody over there my presence needs to touch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you say, oh, that's all oh, snooty and hotty. And, oh, no, it's not. It is knowing who you are. <laughs> because you don't carry your own presence unless you're full of yourself. Tell me, mama, say amen. amen. You don't carry yourself. You are a carrier of the kingdom. And you're a dominator. So when you walk into a place, you're like, I need to sit right there. Because of whom I carry needs to touch. Are you with me? Are you greater than you think you are? This is why the enemy loves deception. And why he likes people to sell out for stuff in the world. And he convinces them that they need that instead of the world needing you. Oh, I need a drink today. Guess what? You sold out when you needed to be the drink. I don't know about you, but the Bible says Paul, Paul, I think it was Paul who said, I've been poured out like a drink offering. Oh, oh, oh. See, I don't know about you, but I came tonight to pour out. Oh, somebody should take a drink, you know what I mean? Hey, because I'm a carrier of not my presence, but the one who sent me. Oh, there's one that sent me in whom I carry. That I've been sent to pour him out. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Sometimes the carrier gets a little carried away, you know what I mean? <laughs> Somebody say amen. Do you understand image now? You understand identity now? This is why everything in the world pulls on you. Why does everything in that world pull on you? It's not because you need it. It is because you're a carrier of what it needs. The pull to do this, the pull to do that, the pull to be over there and have this and have that. No, it needs what you have. But because we see ourselves so small, we fight everyone. <laughs> I 
I love Jesus. Jesus smiled, told Peter, put the sword away. <laughs> Bro, I appreciate your valor, but I must go through this. If I didn't have to go through it, all I had to do was put a call. <laughs> See, you have the power to make a call when you know who you are. When you bear the image of the king, you can call him. And he will answer you. And he'll show you. Uh -oh. Great and mighty things which you don't know because you have not yet seen. Because you have not been, it has not been revealed. It's all in the scripture, isn't it? <laughs> it says, if you call me, I'll answer. Because you bear my image. You have the ability. You got my number based on the image in which you carry. And if you call on me, I will answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Because it has not yet been imaged to you. All you need is another image. All you need is another image. That's all you need. Tell your neighbor all you need is another image. You see, when we have an image... Break that one down first. I'm breaking it down. I, I heard a man of God say this, and I thought, that's a good message, man. He said, the, the thing with a good mother is to eat the meat, break it down, and produce good milk. That's a good mom. So I'm working on being a good pastor to break that down. And give it to you. I'm working on it. But that apostolic anointing just seems to jump. So. <laughs> just jump with it, you know. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, if you have one image, does not mean you have the whole picture. Which is why we need another image one word from god will deliver you one image from god will deliver you but to be completely free you must not stop at one you must not stop at one well i've got saved good one image we stop right there. One image. Jesus, he's my savior. And we never break down the image of salvation. And we keep it as a religious mentality. When all he's saying is, let me reveal myself bigger. So not only will you be excited that you're going to heaven, but you'll be excited that heaven is coming to you. Let me give it to you. Can I give it to you? Watch this. The angel of the Lord told the disciples, the way you see him is the way he shall return. Mm. Let me say that right here, guys. I'm looking for the prophetic, the people that can understand the prophetic. Where, where's the prophetic people? The way you see him go is the way you'll see him come. The angel had to prophesy to the disciples. 
the image in which you have of him going is the same image you'll have of him coming. Salvation. Salvation. The fullness of salvation is not you going, but him coming. Oh, 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 oh y'all tired. Y'all want to go home. So, are you receiving? Some of us are excited because we're going, but we still live here. And we're not too excited when we wake up tomorrow and face issues. Because we never see him coming. I don't know about you, but when I wake up every morning, I watch for him coming. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm a watcher. I wake up in the morning, I keep my eyes closed, and I'm a watching. I'm a watching for assignment in which he's showing up for me to accomplish. Even if it's the most simplest thing, I'm watching him show up deliver an assignment for me to accomplish in which he is involved in that I may dominate. Uh, somebody say glory. glory. Am I breaking it down enough for you? Please tell me. I got to be a good mom. You know what I mean? Oh, y'all still. Let me say, oh, Jesus, pastor's changing. No. I am breaking down the revelation to put it in your spirit so when you wake up in the morning, you can see Jesus coming. You're like, he's coming on my money. He's coming on my children. He's coming on my knees. He's coming on my back. He's coming into my mind. I have rest in the word that he's coming. Oh, stand to your feet. That's good enough. That's good enough. That's enough. That's enough right there. Hey, I said he's coming. Oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. Hey, that's why he said be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make your phone call in to know that I'm coming because you called me. Nobody wants to call the pastor, but nobody wants to call Jesus. All I'm trying to help you know is that you need the image of picking up the phone and calling on the name of the Lord Jesus, and he shall come. Mm. Somebody say, come on, Jesus. Oh, he coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Sing something. Riding on the cloud. Go. Go ahead. After trumpets also. call, so lift your voice. It's the sound of jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud. Yeah, come on, Mike. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's the sound of jubilee. Because out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Look at all of that. Yeah. I'm going to read this scripture that I gave you in Matthew. Work on that, brother. Get that one up there. Matthew chapter 1, you stand, just stand. I, I want to show you. Somebody say image. image. Matthew chapter 1. And uh, brother's going to load that song. We're going to bless the Lord. Matthew chapter 1. Just, 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 just hang in there real quick. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. I know this is not a Christmas message, okay? Let's get over yourself. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man 
and not wanting to make a uh oh public example was minded to put her away secretly. That's a just man. Shut your mouth and walk. That's a just man. Uh, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, your, your Mary, to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say of the Holy Ghost. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be, somebody say fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord. Who said it? How did he say it? Through the prophet. Somebody say the prophet. The prophet. Saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. So he said, let me give you an image that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's why the angel proclaimed the way you see him go is the way he's coming. But before he went, he said, I am sending myself in spirit form to you. So you'll never be without Emmanuel. Uh, did you get that song yet, brother? Come on. <laughs> Somebody oh, say, God. God is with me. God is for me. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. So lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, cause out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Before he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call to lift your voice. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. It's out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Come on, everybody, we're going to sing it. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no come here, hear you singing. Come on, y'all. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. It's out of time's 
until salvation comes. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for revelation, oh God. We receive a revelatory word today to open up our eyes and know that we have been born on this planet to rule and reign with you, to give you all the glory. Whatever you ask us to accomplish, that is what we're going to do. And we're going to do it for your glory, for your honor, and for no other reason but to give you praise and to decree and declare that you are our God and there is no other. And what we do is to bless you, oh God. What you have assigned upon our life to accomplish, no matter what it is, it is to give you praise. Hallelujah. So we give you praise with our lips, we give you praise with our hands, and we give you praise in the works of our faith. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, listen, I bless you tonight. I believe that you have received a wonderful word from the Lord and that tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to chump. Hey, hey. You're going to be like, Lord, I hear your voice and I know what I need to do today. I'm so now I'm going to jump. I'm going to take I'm it. I'm going to take my place, do what I'm called to do and conquer. conquer. I'm going to overtake. Yeah, overtake. I feel somebody overtaking right now. I feel like somebody's just overtaking. Overtaking. I feel you overtaking. I feel you're more than a conqueror. Yeah. I, I feel you taking back what belongs to you. Yeah. Hey, what God paid for, God said, go get it. It belongs to you. Yeah. I feel like somebody taking their healing. They're taking their deliverance. They're taking their victory. They'll no longer be deceived by the enemy. Hey, every day they wake up and say, I'm, I'm blessed and I've been born I'm to conquer. I'm taking it back. 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 Just lift your hands. Just wave, wave. Yeah, Just wave at the Lord. Shaka Raburobobo Shekere Beya. Mendala la bashikere de bushata roshikata muskere menga mendala la bose breka yo yo yeah yeah shikele manda oh you're victorious you got the victory every day in every way you have the victory hallelujah you're blessed going in blessed coming out you're blessed in the city blessed in the field the hand of the Lord is upon you. You are a mighty man. Yeah. Mighty woman of God. You are a, 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 a shaka, an image of the great I am. Yeah. I said you are an image of the great I am. So when you look in the mirror, you're like, my God, you look good in me. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, when you wake up and look in the mirror, you're like, my God, yeah. you look good in me. Hey, the great I am lives in me. And my God, you look good in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Like everybody uh, used to have bad days, ain't got no bad days because every day's a good day. Uh, every day's a blessing. Uh, every day is a good day. Sure. Blessing of the Lord. Somebody shout glory. Blessing of the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Sure looks good on you. The blessing of the Lord. Hey, the blessing of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell him. It sure looks good on you. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. Neighbor. Blessing of the Lord, the 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 blessing of the Lord. Receive the blessing of the Lord. Right where you are. 
the blessing Just receive the that touch of the Holy Spirit that is moving in this place. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just touch your people. Touch, 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 touch. Touch, touch, touch. Seal that word. Seal that revelation. Seal that image in their heart by fire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Conquerors that cannot be conquered. Thank you. Shabrote Misha. Mendero no buskiri la bala. Teshka taba. Touch. 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 every deceiving image I decree and declare that you are made free by the word of the Lord Jesus Christ you are made free and you have eyes to see ears to hear and a heart to understand <sighs> thank you oh God thank you father thank you I give you all the praise glory and honor for what you have said and what you do, oh God. I take no credit upon myself. But I bless, hey, I just bless. I just bless. I bless, bless, bless. Bless the listeners, the hearers, and the doers. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Somebody say glory. I believe you received today. You believe you received today? How about when you wake up in the morning, you know you got it? Yeah. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, and you're like, I know! The dog and the cat gonna run. Ah, oh, what happened? They know it. Oh, how's gonna wake up? Oh my Lord! Jesus is in the house. Amen. All right. Well, you're blessed. Go conquer. Go handle. Go deal. Go go take what belongs to you in the kingdom of God in this world, and give the Lord praise for it. Amen. Every day, every day, because He's blessing you with favor and honor. Amen. If you no longer sell yourself out or sell yourself short. Hey, because you're greater than you think you are. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you look better. I see you better today. Now. After this word, I see you better. I, I see you better. I see you better than, I, I see you better. You know what I mean? As I look at you, I see you better than, than, you, than when I saw you earlier. I just received. You look better. I see you better, better, better. <laughs> You look so much hey, better. I released you already. Y'all can go home. Uh, go conquer. Presence Get you some rest in the word. You. Yeah. Yeah. You look better. <laughs> so much better. Woo. Presence of the Lord. 
sure looks good on you. It sure looks good on you. Uh, y'all release hey. you already. Y'all go home. You're yeah. looking better. We'll bless you. We'll see you Saturday night. You're looking so much better. The presence of the Lord sure looks good on you. You're looking better. I see your neighbor, you're looking so much better. The presence of the Lord is looking good, 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 good on you. I said, you're looking better. The more and more you spend time in the presence of God, you're looking better. The more time you give unto the Lord, I said, you're looking better. And the look of God, the presence of God, it sure looks good on you. My friend, you're looking better. You're looking so much better. The presence of the Lord, it sure looks good on you. So keep on trusting. Keep on believing, keep on seeing the revelation of our God. I said, you keep on trusting, just keep on believing, keep on seeing. Revelation of God sure looks good on you. I said, You're looking better. There is a shake lingo malaka. When I moved this way, I saw five thousand dollars. When I moved in this way. <laughs> Oh, it when I walked right. <laughs> Take! Whoa. Whoa! You're looking better. <laughs> hey, glory. The blessing of the Lord's overtaking you now. <laughs> it will chase you down. It will chase you down. It will chase you down it will chase you down sure looks good on you I said you're looking better you have your checkbook or you're having a way of making a deposit you need to write in your deposit slip right now you know how you make a deposit in the bank? I know. So much I know $5,000. You, if you have a checkbook or some, some form of document, you better write it in your deposit part. Oh. But I, I just saw a supernatural release when I moved this way. It doesn't mean you can't take it over there. It's mine because faith will pick it up. It's mine wherever it's at. It's mine, no, oh, it's mine. <laughs> the blessing of heart. the Lord. You feel that fire, you feel that anointing. That's because the prophet has released the blessing what he saw of the in Lord. the spirit as an image. Revelation for the people to grab it. Revelation 
We see the revelation, the revelation. I said you're looking better. I think I can't looking better already. <laughs> It's looking so hey, your bank account looking better. better already. I said your bank account looking better already. Sure looks good. Some of y'all gonna get out. What, what, what are we in? We, we were in June this week. June this week. Right. Friday's June. Oh, I'll mess with y'all. Come on, prophesy. I'll release that word. And some of you, when you get to June, will have more money than you had. Prophesy. I said, when you get into June, prophesy. Some of you will find that you have more money in your account than you ever had. Prophesy. Prophesy, Apostle. Oh my God. I receive. That means contracts will be released. Hey, bonuses will be released. I receive. Money you'll find that you never found. I receive. Clients will come I under receive. double. Yes. Because you'll never be broke another day in your life. Hallelujah. Your tithers, your givers. Yes. And I release it to you. I receive. Hallelujah. You. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yes. Yeah, you. Woo. We're looking better. We're looking better. Me too. I receive. We're looking better. I receive. Hey. I receive too. So much better. The blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. Oh, yeah. It sure looks good. It sure looks good on you. It sure looks I don't know good. who this is for, but what you couldn't sell shall be sold. I just heard the Lord say, what you couldn't sell shall be sold. That means what nobody would buy in the last six, eight months. In one night, you'll come out of Egypt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm bumping Woo. up the price right now. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It was. It was this much. Now it's this much because I got a word from God. I'd be bumping up the price. Like, let me bump it. Let me bump it up higher. Because I got a word from God. Make the devil pay. <laughs> Things are looking better. Brother, Chuck, brother, work in me. Work in me. Work. Life is looking better. <laughs> the hand of God is on me. It's looking better. God with you is so, so much better. I'm walking in your perfect will, my God. I'm walking in your perfect will, my God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> I see, I see it's better. I see it's greater. 
I see it's beyond my thought comprehension or my imagination. It's so much greater. I see you pouring it out. God, I see you pouring it out. You're pouring it out in abundance, in abundance. You're pouring it out on your children. Hey, Father, we receive tonight. Father, we receive. So I just decree favor on projects. Whatever project you have your hand on, let it be the hand of favor upon your projects. Oh, favor, favor on your projects. Favor upon your ability to accomplish. Favor projects, assignments, workloads. Somebody say workloads. Favor, favor oh, on workloads. Favor, favor on workloads. Favor. Favor, favor on projects. Favor, favor on assignments. On assignments. Favor, favor on workloads. On workloads. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I receive it. I receive. Thank the Lord for it. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank Him for it. Thank Him for it. Thank Him for it. Amen.